So this is just a little video showing how I assembled a 5 grain CTI M motor and I'm just following the directions exactly as they're printed on the CTI hard copy instructions and uh, just going through each step to remind myself how I did it and maybe it'll be helpful for someone else out there on YouTube. Okay, so here's a guided tour of the CTI M1810 Red. So we've got the five big 75 millimeter grains, and each one has its own O-ring, so those will be sliding into this casing, five grain casing, one at a time, with an O-ring separating each one. Here's the straw used for inserting the igniter, which is right here. Then we have the O-ring kit, and we have the smoke here, and we have the forward closure. This winds on there. This seals off the top of the motor. And then down here we have this nice CTI wrench for tightening the closures. And then with the O-rings go on there. On the outside and the inside of this, here's your aft closure with these uh, holes to put in the wrench. And then finally, and here's the nozzle. And then finally, here is my Aeropack 98 to 75 adapter with the other ring already installed up here. For the forward assembly and the smoke element, we need to first put a thin layer of lubricant inside the well then put some lubricant on the, the top face of the smoke element and then push it inside that well so that it's flush with the surface like this. All right, and now I've put the O-rings uh, here in the nozzle holder on the interior and external, external uh, O-ring slots. And then I've put one here over here on the forward closure and you can see that the smoke element has already been inserted and I put the lubricant on that as recommended in the instructions internally. Okay so the next step is to take these five grains which I've lined up along here and get them ready to put into the phenolic liner. And I put them in one at a time, starting from the forward end of the phenolic liner, put in a grain, then put an O-ring on top of it, then put in the next grain, and so on, until all of them are inside the liner. And so each grain is separated from the next grain by an O-ring. So I have all five grains in there, and it's actually a pretty tight fit, as the instructions say, uh, the final ring should be omitted if if it would stick out more than a third of its thickness and in this case it definitely would it's a very tight fit so i'm just going to stop with that and not put the ring on and now on the aft end i take the nozzle holder and press it onto the nozzle until it snaps in place okay so i got all five grains installed in this phenolic liner and I've got the O-ring installed in the nozzle holder, and then I snap the nozzle holder onto the nozzle. So the next step is to cover this with a lot of lubricant. I have, I'm using this stuff called Super Lube. And then what I'll do is set it up vertically on a table and then bring this aluminum motor case down slowly on top of it and hope that everything fits. And as I said before, I'm not putting on the top O-ring because the instructions say that if it's very close fit and the O-ring wouldn't fit, and at least it would stick out more than a third, then you should leave it just as it is flush without the O-ring. And so that's what I did, but I did take all the five grains out and O-rings out to try it again just to make sure I hadn't twisted an O-ring or something, but I get the same result. So it's just going to be a, a tight fit there where it is flush at the top without the o-ring
Now we come to the messy step, which is not shown here because it was too hard to videotape it. But I take the this time to put this automotive super lube lubricant on the exterior of the phenolic liner. So I take it and set it up vertically with the aft end down and you cover it with a layer of lubricant. This will make it much easier to dismantle it after the flight and also makes it easier to install now. So once it's nicely covered with lubricant, then you take the aluminum casing. So, so the phenolic liner is set up vertically on a hard surface. I didn't show it here. This here it's horizontal, but actually you set up vertically on a hard surface and then take the aluminum casing above it and start pulling it down over the forward end. Just keep on pulling it down until finally you get to the bottom and keep removing excess lubricant along the way as it kind of spills out a little bit. And then I go to the aft end of the casing and take the aft retaining ring and start to screw it in just a little bit so that the threads start to grab onto the threads inside the aft end of the aluminum casing. And I use the CTI wrench if necessary. But don't tighten it all the way down yet. You just start to tighten it a little bit so that the threads are gripping onto it starting out. Now go to the forward end of the casing and go ahead and put in the black sealing disc that goes on top of the highest grain. And the instructions also say you, at this point you can put a thin layer of lubricant inside the aluminum casing, up, but only above that sealing disc, nowhere else inside there. But it does help make it a little smooth. Next step is to take the forward closure assembly, with the, the, the part that has the smoke element, and push that in this forward section, and then put the retaining ring on top of it and begin tightening it. and you want to tighten it down. Again, we're on the, the forward end of the casing. You want to tighten it down until it gets flush with the casing or slightly submerged, but not farther than that. Just basically flush or slightly submerged here on the forward end. So the forward end is set where we want it. Now we can go to the aft end, and now we can really tighten this one down. So I took the CTI wrench, and really cranked this down uh, so that it's good and tight. And then you tighten it down so that it's very secure. And normally it wouldn't go all the way down to the end of the threads. You typically have a little bit left where it's fully secure, but there's still a tiny gap there. The guy from Animal Motor Works told me that gap could be up to 1 16th of an inch. In this case, it was smaller. It just needs to be very tight, fully secure and having a gap that's not greater than 1 16th. Alright, well it turned out that fit very nicely and you can see the fit on this end and then down here the fit on this end and of course I use the CTI wrench and tighten it down very tightly. And so it looks like we're ready to fly. Let's just hope it works. And here's a view of the final product with the red cap, the straw, and the igniter ready to go in the rocket. And hopefully it'll have a great flight, but uh, you know with rocketry we're never quite sure what's going to happen on any given flight. But that's one of the things that we love about rocketry as a hobby. Where you gotta expect the unexpected and hope for the best. And always be safe and follow the rules and have a lot of fun.